An affluent individual becomes annoyed when he discovers that he is seated next to a woman of larger size in the first-class cabin. He proceeds to express his dissatisfaction to the flight attendant. From the moment James Courtney laid eyes on the woman who would be his seatmate, he had a sinking feeling that this flight was going to be far from pleasant. She was huge. How in the world was he going to endure the discomfort of sitting next to her? As the woman settled into her seat and fastened her seatbelt, her elbow accidentally bumped into James. Be careful! James raised his voice in frustration, causing her to redirect her attention towards him. Oh, I'm so sorry, she said. Please excuse me. Excuse me? Oh, how insightful, James scoffed. Or excuse the 3,000 donuts you ate to get to that size. The woman let out a surprised gasp when she saw him, catching James off guard. He noticed that she appeared to be quite young, with a sensitive and innocent gaze. It made him smirk. Madam, when you're traveling, you should consider reserving two seats. The woman's eyes welled up with tears, yet James seemed to be on a roll, particularly when he observed that her attire was inexpensive and outdated, and her shoes showed signs of heavy wear. He jokingly remarked, I suppose your entire budget is dedicated to nachos and hot dogs, huh? Can't you afford two seats? Next time, consider asking for contributions from your fellow passengers. I'm sure they would be more than willing to show their generosity. As the woman gazed out the window, James caught a glimpse of tears streaming down her face in the reflection. Listen, he said. I know someone who operates a clinic in Mexico, and I'm confident that he can offer you a liposuction procedure at a very affordable price. Tears were shaking the young woman's shoulders, and James felt a sense of satisfaction for enduring the discomfort of being squeezed in next to her. When the attendant made his rounds with the drinks cart, the man requested a martini. He confidently delivered his line, shaken, not stirred, to the attractive flight attendant, channeling his inner James Bond. With a playful tone, he jokingly remarked, I'm not sure what this big woman over here wants to drink. The attractive attendant pursed her lips and gave him a disapproving look. Then she turned to the woman beside her. Ma'am, would you like anything to drink? The woman gave a solemn nod and gently dabbed at her eyes. Sure, I'll have a Diet Coke. James rolled his eyes. Isn't it a little late to be drinking a Diet Coke? Both the flight attendant and the woman ignored him, but James couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction when he realized he had managed to provoke them both. As he reclined, he savored the taste of an olive and enjoyed the refreshing sip of his martini, while the woman beside him indulged in her Diet Coke. He suddenly became aware that she would eventually need to use the restroom and would have to maneuver around him. Shortly after finishing his drink, the flight attendant arrived with dinner. She placed a lovely tray in front of him and another in front of his fellow traveler. Are you certain that is enough? James jokingly remarked to the flight attendant, suggesting that it would require a collective effort to satisfy the hunger of the lady in question. The flight attendant ignored him and continued attending to the other passengers in first class. That was rude of her, wasn't it? James turned to the woman sitting next to him and said, I'm considering filing a complaint about her. However, his fellow passenger continued to ignore him, leaving James to fully enjoy his outstanding dinner. As he savored the final drop of his wine, the flight attendant returned, wearing a bright smile on her face. Excuse me, she said politely. The captain is a big fan of you and would be delighted to have you join him in the cockpit. James was taken aback when he noticed the flight attendant engaging in conversation with the big woman seated beside him. The woman appeared delighted, her face flushed with a smile as she nodded along. James had no choice but to rise from his seat and allow her to pass. The flight attendant led the woman away, and James sat back down. He was prepared to send off a series of critical emails to the company's management regarding the service and conditions in first class on their flights. He was in the midst of crafting some passionate rants when the captain's voice came over the speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, we have quite the star in our midst. If you are fans of I Love Opera like me, you will definitely recognize the voice. The cabin was filled with a delightful voice, singing a few bars from a famous aria. The passengers couldn't help but burst into applause and share their excitement with each other. That's correct, exclaimed the captain. It's the lovely Miss Maria Jones and she's flying with us to do a charity concert for world hunger. 
The entire plane burst into applause, much to James's discomfort. After that, the flight attendant approached. She spoke in a stern, no-nonsense tone, making her message clear. Regardless of your wealth, if you upset that girl again, I will make sure you're seated in economy. James was about to voice his objection when he noticed a mischievous sparkle in the flight attendant's eye. I'm sorry, he mumbled. You should apologize to someone else, not me, she said. After some time, Maria Jones returned with a smile on her face, happily signing autographs for the rest of the passengers. James quickly stood up to give her the opportunity to sit down. Listen, he said, flashing his most captivating smile. I'm sorry if I was a little rude. I had no idea who you were. Maria turned to face him, and James couldn't help but notice the captivating beauty of her eyes. It doesn't matter who I am. It is never acceptable to treat people in such a manner. And besides, it's clear that you're not sorry. Would you be apologizing if I didn't have some level of fame? You know, I can't help my weight, but you can change your attitude. Stop judging people. James remained silent and reclined in his seat until they arrived in Portland.